Fisher. Today we have with us my mother, Evangelist Johnny Mae Austin. Right. She's going to come for the meditation on this morning. Can we say amen for her? Amen. We're so glad to be here. We thank God for bringing us over the highway safely. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Minister Kenny had preached in an 8 o'clock service, and now he's here to do, a, do this one. Praise the Lord. I said, well, I'm going to go drive him up here because we're going up here. He's going to magnify God. Praise the Lord. So I'm not going to, I don't have much, you know, praise God, but I'm just going to give you a little something before he comes before you with the word of God. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Praise the Lord. So if you have your Bible, though, if you want to, you don't have to. Praise the Lord. We can go to Ephesians 6 and 10. Praise the Lord. And it's my, some of my favorite scriptures, you know, one of my favorite. Yes, Praise the Lord. And I thank God for it, you know. Praise God because it lets us know about being dressed. Praise the Lord. Yes. Praise God. And this is a letter that Paul wrote to the Ephesians. Praise the Lord. Some say it was to Laodicea, but it was to the, to the Ephesians. Praise the Lord. Yes. Praise God. And he's talking about the whole armor of God. I don't do texts and I don't take them often, but if I had one to give, I'd say, make sure you keep your clothes on. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Make sure you keep your clothes on. Praise the Lord. Because these clothes, you got to have them at all time and at any time. Praise the Lord. If you don't know, you got to be on the Lord's side. Praise the Lord. Praise God. And I'm not going to read all of these verses, but the word says in Ephesians 6 and 11, Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Praise the Lord. And we see that this, all of this is just not out there in the world. You come on in the church and you'll find these things going on. Wickedness in high places, people holding offices, keeping up more devil than the devil himself almost. Praise the Lord. And it's just not out in the world. Praise the Lord. It's in here, but we got to be aware of the devil in all of his wiles. Praise the Lord. And you won't be if you don't have on all of your armor. I'm telling you, put, keep your clothes on. When God save you, you get clothes put on you. Huh? They come on, because now you're going to listen to God. Amen. And it said, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. The days ain't getting much eviler than this, but they're going to get more worse than this. And we got to stand. We got to be able to stand. Praise the Lord. And it says, stand there for having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness. And having your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Amen. In Isaiah, it talks about how beautiful the feet of those that bring us the word. You know, amen. Amen. Coming with peace. How lovely. Peace. We are not, we're not keeping up the devil. You know, we're not warring against one another. We're not supposed to be. Amen. We're supposed to be peace, peaceful. Amen. Over here on the Lord's side. You know, it, that, but that's some of our clothes. And you can find the ones that's not completely dressed. Amen. You'll see them with their clothes off. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know who they are. Praise the Lord. And the Bible says you're not judging them. You just uh, see the fruit that they're bearing. And then they, in this case, they just ain't got their clothes on. Amen. And you're having shot your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. And if you don't got on that breastplate of righteousness, I mean, that covers the, that, that most important. And the armor covers that most important part. Amen. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against you. Ah, amen. Knowing the word of God, that breastplate going to protect all of that. You know what you put in your heart, you know, so you don't sin against God. And we don't harm others in our way. Sometimes we harm others. Right in the church, we harm one another. Amen. And sometimes we don't know it. But that's why I pray, Lord, anything I've done, you know, and I don't know, forgive me for it. If I've done it and I don't know that I've done it, Lord, forgive me. Because I don't want to be a stumbling block to anyone. And it said, take the helmet of salvation. Now, keep your clothes on because you got to reach and get the helmet of salvation. That means you done laid something down. Huh? What you going to do when the wicked one come upon you? You got time to reach and get it and put it on? No, it don't go that way. Amen. You got to have it on at all times. Amen. So you can warn against this devil. Amen. Because the Bible said he's walking to and fro in the earth as a roaring lion, 
See, that he's not a roaring lion because there ain't but one lion, and that was the lion of Judah. Y'all know who he was. Hey, man, now, for real. You know, but he's perpetrating a fraud, trying to make you think he's something that he is not. He's already defeated. You know he's defeated, but sometimes he makes us think that he, we, we don't believe he's defeated because we give in to him. Hey, man, we'll give up, give out, and give in. Hey, man, but he's already defeated. We just have to know it. You've got to know it. Praise God. Amen. So keep on your helmet of salvation. Don't lay nothing, none of this stuff off. Just keep your clothes on, I'm telling you, y'all. And praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. And Because we see over in Luke 18, about 18 and 1, the word Jesus told us men are always to pray. Always pray. Ain't no, you can't faint, you can't give up here. Amen. But without your faith, you're not going to make it. You will not make it, praise God. I tell you, we got to keep all of this on so we can stand in this evil day. If the saints don't stand, what's going to happen to the world? Amen. We got to stand. And the Bible said out of all of your standards, still stand. Amen. Praise the Lord. So we ain't giving up nothing to the devil. He's under our feet where we're going to keep him. Amen. And we're going on with God. And we're going to be fully clothed, ready for war. Amen. Y'all pray for me. What we're going to do is we're going to, Pastor Ray said that we, he wants to open up a, a testimony service now. So if there's anyone who would like to give a testimony, I'm not going to draft my grandma. She ain't feeling too good today. So I won't draft her if she don't want to. But if she feel good now, if she feel good enough, you want to testify? Okay, all right now. <laughs> Thank God for it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Everybody praise the Lord. Ah, hallelujah. Truly, I just thank God for blessing and sparing me to be able to be here. Praise the Lord one more time. I didn't have to be here. Hallelujah. I could have been dead and gone. Hallelujah. I could have been in my own home. Praise the Lord. But I thank God today. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, how he woke me up this morning, touched me with the thing of love, called me by my name. Hallelujah, said it's time to get up. And I thank God. Oh, I thank God that he blessed me and saying, the Lord has been real good to me. Hallelujah, I shouldn't be sitting here. Praise God, I remember the time I couldn't even talk. good you know I thank God because in living in a day like this and some of us saying well, you know we need Jesus we need Jesus hallelujah we can't do it without him praise the Lord I'm not going to talk no more praise God I'm not going to talk to you but I just thank God for everything and all things thank God for blessing me to see you again and thank God that you're hold, still holding on. Amen. Praise the Lord. So I pray for you and you pray for me. Amen. Amen. Do you want to testify? Testify. This is my sister, praise the Lord. You remember her. Praise the Lord. She's had a stroke since then, you know, since she's been here. The enemy tried to take her hearing, so she's not hearing really well, but she can still testify. Praise the Lord. Go ahead and testify. You can sit down or stand. <laughs> Can you turn around so they can see you? I'll, I'll help you. I thank God for being here today. The devil tried to cheat me out of coming to any church today. Yeah. Try to get my heart, heart to going, pressure up. 
I had to take my own pressure, you know. Yes. So I took it and it was high, but I'm here anyway. Yes, amen. And I thank God I came. Yes. Praise the Lord. Pray for me, please. Amen. I'm on my way. Amen. Back to recovery. Back to recovery. Back to amen. recovery. Yes. I'm not going to have no fast job. It's going to be slowly. Yes. Thank you. God, do God bless you. Amen. Amen. We praise God for knowing the words. You know, God has already healed us, you know. Back on Calvary, we were healed. By his stripes, we were healed, praise the Lord. But we do not position ourselves and keep ourselves in the path of his blessings, praise the Lord. Okay. Would you like to kiss her? Praise God. This is the Kathy Coleman. This is our family friend of our yeah. family who came with us. Amen. 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 Oh, okay. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'm just glad to be here today. I am. I, I love these girls here. They're like my family. I've been trying to travel with them for a long time. I've been to work five this morning, and I said, don't leave me. Can you give me another half an hour? You know, and God has blessed. I, you know, I just want to be in the midst of the saints. You know, I have a lot of things going on in my life. I have a mother who's, who's uh, not doing well. I have a twin brother who's not doing well. But I know that God is able. God is able. So I know that I have to stay in the company of the saints. You know, we all have family members that are not saved. And so I just know for myself, I have to stay amongst the saints. I have to get it while I can get it and, and keep it and just, because if you don't, you just tend not to be what you need to be. And I just thank God for allowing me to come. I thank God for the Holy, Holy Ghost that is here. I thank God for just being able to fill his presence in times like these. And I just ask you to pray for me and my strength in the Lord. Amen. What Pastor Ray was saying about he prayed for his wife, for a wife to sing and a Christian. And I want, just for these young people here, you know, you do that. You, you know what you want, what God wants for you, and you need a godly woman. You pray for that godly woman. You tell God you want a godly woman, a godly man who's in the, in the ministry, who uh, loves you more than anything. Because if, it, if they love God, they're going to love you. But what I'm saying this was when I went to Fedonia, like in like 2000 or whatever, you know, and um, I, they, they were, you know, had the music going, and there was a man in front of me. And we were all dancing and everything, and he was up there dancing. He was the only man that was dancing. He was just dancing. And I said, Lord, Lord, I want a man like that. This is what I want. You know, I want a man that loves you, get, not embarrassed to get up and praise your holy name, dance before you. And guess who that man was? This Pastor John. I didn't know him. I didn't know who he was. I didn't know his name. I didn't know him. And it was like eight or nine years later before I even knew who he was. But that man that I said, that's what I want. A man like that. God gave me that man. God gave me that man later on. You know, so don't give up, young people. Don't give up. You stay faithful to him. And God would bring that person around. It wasn't a time to meet Pastor John then, but later on it was. So I'm just saying that. We thank God for those testimonies. We thank God for those testimonies. My mama used to stay in testimony service. She said, if your testimonies are true, then heaven surely belongs to you. So heaven belongs to you. And we, we bid you good, God bless you this morning. Uh, if we could all just stand for just a moment of prayer. God, we want to thank you this morning. God, we want to thank you for everything that you've done on today, God. We want to thank you for everything that you're about to do, God. We ask that you move even the more in the rest of this service, God. We ask that you send your word, God, in a mighty way. Send it with power, authority, might, and conviction, God. Send it, God. Shield me behind the cross. And give me what to say to your people, God. I want no flesh to be represented today, but God, every representation should be pointed towards you. So, God, we ask these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, Lord. We want to thank God on today. We want to thank God for Pastor Ray.
Pastor Han. We want to thank God for you having me on today. We want to thank God for my mother who gave that meditation. Yeah, yeah, make sure to have your clothes on. She gave that meditation. We thank God for her. We thank God for my pastor, Pastor Stanley Moore of the Progressive Baptist Church for letting me be here on today. Uh, we want to thank God for everyone who traveled with me, my grandmother and my auntie and the family friend. We want to thank God for everybody in the household of faith. If you have your Bible, you can turn with me in it uh, uh, to Daniel 3. We're going to go to Daniel 3. We're going to start at the 15th verse. Daniel 3 and 15. When you have it, indicate by shouting amen if you got it. All right. And the Bible gives us this intelligence, Pastor Ray. It says, now if ye be ready, that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, Flute, harp, sack, but psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the image which I have made. Well, but if ye worship not, ye shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered the, and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it, get this now, be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. And he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. This is my favorite verse. It says, but if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy God, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. I'm going to stop right there, and I'm going to use as a subject title on this morning, I want to use handle your fire. That's what I want to use today. Uh, sometimes, Pastor Ray, uh, you need a situation or a circumstance for God to show himself. There's something, Pastor Ray, that I like to call ordained circumstances, which means that uh, your circumstances could have been ordered by the Lord. Yeah, we going around here rebuking the devil, but it was God that chose you for the challenge. Yeah, so don't ask God, Pastor Han, to help progress you if you're not willing to suffer. Stop asking God to uh, increase your faith if you don't want to go through any circumstances. Yeah, what I come to find out is that, Pastor Ray, faith gives permission for persecution. Yeah. In other words, it's not faith until it's been tried. And a faith that has not been tried cannot be trusted. I, I wish I had some help in here now. Uh, you gonna have to go through something to get to your destiny. Mm -hmm. Everybody talking about destiny, but, but don't nobody want to talk about the destructive things that it takes to get to your destiny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you got to, you got to go through some suffering. And the truth of the matter is, is, is before you can get to where God is taking you, God has to destroy some things in your life. Not only does he have to get rid of some stuff, he got to get rid of some people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I need you to understand that where God is trying to take you, mm -hmm, everybody can't go. Yeah, just because they started off with you, that does not guarantee them a spot next to you where you're getting to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God said that I'm not going to let you get to the place that I've ordained for you until you get rid of the leeches on your back. Because if you don't get 
rid of the leeches, uh, guess what? They'll suck the blessing right out of you. Yeah, 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 Pastor. I know as saints, we want mama to go and, and, and we want daddy to go and we want our best friends to go, but 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 everybody just can't go. Yeah, yeah. So while you're suffering, uh you got to be careful with your complaining. Because God will not allow you to go any further until you begin to praise him for where you are. Mm -hmm. You can talk about what you're going to do when you get there, but God wants to know what are you going to do right in the place that you are in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you complain, God, it, it angers them. And, and when God gets angry, he gets really aggressive with his judgment. So, my brothers and sisters, you might as well go ahead and get yourself together and realize and know that you're going to have to suffer before you leave here. If you don't believe me, look at Bible. It say that a man that's born of a woman is yet but, but, but a few days. By God, in them few days, is full. They full of trouble. You're going to have to suffer. And that's why, since I know I got to suffer, I ask God, God, you got to deliver me from people who crumble under pressure. Right. Yeah, I'm not impressed about how good folk can sing and, and how good they can dance. I need to know how can you act when all hell is breaking loose in your life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When your home is in foreclosure, how do you act? Yeah, yeah. When your money ain't where it need to be and you can't pay all your bills, how your act what's your attitude yeah i need to know when your car about to get repossessed can you still praise god can you still lift him up i got to know your attitude yeah 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 you see i got to get through my points you see trouble should cause brother an epidemic in your prayer life don't wait until trouble start to start praying yeah but pray before trouble get here just in case the devil try to get you to where you can't pray y'all yeah, uh, know you can sometime he try to get you to that place because yeah. there have been times on your Christian journey you ain't always had prayer on your mind somebody in the church made you mad you wanted to jump on them you wanted to beat them down but but the prayers that you had stored up they kicked in yeah, yeah, they kicked in, let you know that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. Come on, somebody, against the powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world. Our fight is on a spiritual plane. Not only will it cause an epidemic in your life, but it will ultimately serve as a reminder to be perpetual in your prayer. Perpetual here is everlasting. First Thessalonians 5.17 declares that we ought to pray, Pastor Han, without ceasing. Mm -hmm. So while you're suffering, you must learn how to be steadfast in your prayer life. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it don't look like there's a way out. and Sometimes it may not feel like it. But, but Paul said in Romans 8.18, 8, he said, For I reckon that the suffering of this present time is not worthy. They're not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed. Now let me let me show you something about Paul's life at this time. He first start off chapter 8 here. He says there is therefore now no condemnation. This is when Paul is just getting saved. Mm -hmm. So as he walks with God, he gets to Romans 8:18. 8, he said, "Listen, I reckon. Why does he say I reckon? It's because he ain't been with God too long to know. But about 10 verses later in 28, he say, "Listen, I know that all things work together for the good to them that love God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So as he's walking, he's learning. Mm -hmm. But then about 10 verses later in 38, Romans 8, 38, he said, listen, I am persuaded that I, I wish I had some help in here. He said, I'm persuaded. There ought to be a time in your life where you ought to know that if God brought you out, God gonna bring you out again. Yeah. Amen. Yes, uh, now, Thirdly, suffering brings you 
It brings you closer to God, Pastor. Uh, if you never suffer, you'll never know how to truly get close to God. Jesus said that if you suffer with me, Pastor Han, he said, you'll reign with me. So suffering with God gets you closer to him. That's why he said in Colossians 3 and 2, he said, listen, if you then be risen with Christ, then set your affection on things above. Well, brother preacher, how do I do that? Second Chronicles 7, 14. If my people, which are called by my name will humble themselves and pray. He said, get this now. He said, seek my face and turn from your wicked ways. Now this is the part I like. He said, then, then now that means that there has been some conditions on it. You got to do the first part, but when you do your part, then will I hear from heaven. I'll forgive the sin and I'll heal your land. Suffering is not always a bad thing. You always got to remember that God is always with you. So now when we bring these concepts into the text, we find out in Daniel 3 that the, the Hebrew boys was thrown into the fiery furnace, suffering on behalf of their faith and their savior. I, I want to go to Daniel 3 verse 21 and I'll be done and out your way. And the Bible declared, it says, then these men were bound in their coats, their hosen and their hats and their other garments and were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Verse 22, therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent and the furnace exceeding hot, the flame of the fire slew those men. Get that now. Slew those men that took Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Now understand this. Here is Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fire. Mm -hmm. But the men that got close to throw them in they got consumed I need you to understand something this morning what you've been through would have killed somebody else what you done been through somebody else would have lost their mind what you've been through somebody else would have been in the crazy house but but because God's hands was on you you're still here yeah, yeah, I feel this thing creeping now. Uh, uh, look at verse 25 now. He said, uh, uh, he answered and said, Lo, uh, I see four men mm -hmm, loose, uh huh, walking in the fire. Pass away, I got good news. How many of you know that you can be in the fire, but you can be loose? <laughs> wish I had a witness today. I, I feel this thing kicking me here. He said that they are in the fire but loose. They have no hurt. Mm -hmm. And the form, get that now, of the fourth, uh-huh, he looked like it looked like the son of God mm -hmm. so get this they weren't saved from the furnace by God they were saved in it how many of you know that when you get in the troubles gotta get over in there with you yeah yeah I gotta step in with you yeah yeah I may not can get to where you really are but one thing that I will do is I'll get over in there with you and let you know that everything it's going to be all right. Uh, last point, and I got to get through. Verse 27, he said, and the princes, governors and captains, and the king's counselors, mm -hmm, being gathered together, mm -hmm, saw these men upon whose body had the fire had no power, mm -hmm. uh, and nor was the hair of their head singed, neither were their coats changed. Uh huh. And this is what I like right here. He said, "No, the smell of fire had passed on them." In other words, 
all I'm trying to tell you this morning is that it doesn't matter what you've been through, Pastor Horn. Isn't it good to know that you don't look like what you've been through? I wish I had a witness here. I'm so glad that I don't look like what I just come through. I gotta leave you this morning, but I'm so glad for my suffering experience because if I never suffered, I would have never experienced what God's power can do. I know you've been suffering, but I come to tell somebody today that the Lord, the Lord has got your back. So that's the reason why I'm saying, Lord. Hold my hand while I run this race. I don't want my running. I don't want it to be in vain. Is there anybody here that knows that the Lord will hold you up right in the midst of your situations, right in the midst of all of your troubles? I don't know what you've been going through. I don't know what's been up against your life. I don't know who's been talking about you. But one thing that I do know is that they that wait upon the Lord, he shall renew their strength. If you don't get weary, he said you're going to mount up with wings just like eagles I feel this thing y'all you're gonna run not get weary walk and not think God sent me here to tell somebody don't give up don't throw in the town because it's your time to get everything that God has for you I've learned that through my storms uh, and through my rain uh, through my sufferings uh, and through my heartaches and pain uh, through my deserts uh, and through my valley moments uh, I've learned uh, to trust in Jesus uh, oh yes, uh, and I've learned uh, I've learned to trust in God uh, through it all oh, uh, through it all uh, through all of my hurt through all of my pain through all of my disappointments I've learned hey, I've learned to trust in God is there anybody here that can say that God I trust in you but whatever my situation is whatever my troubles is I trust in you God be not dismayed whatever be ties God will God will he's gonna take care of you ain't God alright ain't God alright say yes yeah your fire. Hey, you. Handle your fire. <laughs> handle your fire. Handle your fire. Handle your fire. Can I get a witness here? How many of you know that when you do your part, God gonna do the rest? I heard somebody say that if you make one step, the Lord, he'll do the rest. Handle your fire, y'all. I got to get through, y'all. Come on now. Handle your fire. God bless you. God bless you. Praise God. Didn't that heart burn as we heard the word of God? Hallelujah. How many want to praise God? Somebody ought to praise God. Somebody ought to praise God. Well, praise God. Hallelujah. Oh. What a blessing to hear the word of God. What a blessing to hear a man of God that bring forth the word of God. Praise God. I'm so glad that Jesus abides in our life today. I'm so glad to hear someone as young as he is preaching the gospel, preaching the good news of Jesus Christ. Oh, it makes my heart feel glad this morning. I'm so glad. I say I'm so glad this morning to be here 
in the midst of all God's people. And we praise God for every opportunity that we get to praise him. Every opportunity that we get to come before and with God's people, we ought to rejoice and be glad. Hallelujah. The word of God says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Can I hear you? Somebody ought to praise him. Put your hands together, someone. Somebody ought to rejoice. Somebody ought to clap their hands. I wish I had someone that was getting to run, run, run for the Lord. I wish I had someone uh, that would get up on your feet and that will clap your hands and that will shout, shout, shout for the glory. I said for the glory of the Lord is in this place. Oh, I feel the praises of the Lord. Oh, he's in the house today. And we praise him for his holy presence. And we thank him for his visitation. We thank him for his holy word. Can I get a witness? Shout yes, somebody. Someone shout yes. Someone shout yes. Someone say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Have your way in me. Have your way in me. Someone ought to praise him. I'm so glad. We thank God for this word. That we can use this word. That we serve a true and living God. That will hear and answer our prayers. Can I hear you? We serve a God that will answer us when their other little G's will not answer. The he three Hebrew boys was in the midst of a fire. And they had Jesus in there with them. I love the way God used you and said, even in the midst of your situation, God comes in the midst of it. He ain't come when, he, when you're out of it, but when you're in the midst of it, when you're going through something, when you can't explain what you're going through, and no one seems to understand what you're going through. But you know God understands everything that we go through in our life. I say he understands everything that we go through. And I'm not preaching behind my beloved brother. But let me tell you, God is good. And he's great to be praised. I wish I had a witness that would just give him a glory. That would give him a hallelujah. That would give him a thank you Jesus. Hallelujah. Someone said thank you. I'm telling you I'm just so glad. I spoke the other week <laughs> and I said our actual hour is a dry place. I don't care if they get mad at me or not. But I must speak what thus said the Lord. Dry in the spirit. People don't want Jesus. They want the form and the fashion. Any leaf can shake when the wind is blowing. Did you hear me? Any leaf can shake when the wind is blowing. But the true and living God who we worship, we're looking for the real people to stand forth. God looking for real people. Amen. Let me tell you, we stand in a fiery furnace here in Oxford in the anchor in faith. We stand in a fire where people don't want to reside, but that's okay. God said if he had two or three witnesses, that's all he need. Two or three gathered in my name. He said what? I will be in the midst. I don't know how long I will be here, but while I'm here, I'm going to praise his name. No one knows the day or the hour that Jesus will return. Jesus don't even know. Only the Father knows. And I'm telling you the truth. Get your house in order because Jesus is soon to return. People, it's time to get things together. It's time to forget about all segregation on the base of doctrines and religions. So many people are based on religion. I, uh, my grandfather went to this church. Uh, my grandmother went to church. I'm going there. But we need to do as God did Abraham. 
Get away from your kindred. Sometimes God will speak to people. I don't know if they listen or not, but he will speak, get away from them. Because you know what? They was in the midst of a lot of idol worship. How many of you know that? Abraham went through that. And God had to move him out. That's why he moved him out, because he didn't want him contaminated. God wanted to use him. And he did use him. Be the father of many nations. And that seed still going on in our life today. As believers, how many of you are glad to have that seed in you? Amen. I, I'm looking for more revival. I love that term we use, a theme, a, a revival of the octet. <laughs> but we are in an ungodly society. Just tell it like it is. Where uh, education is the God. I don't hear you. I say education. Overshadows the stand for God. I'm talking about salvation. People that are really born again. I'm talking about people that are washing the blood of the Lamb and know they are washed. Those are people that are going to make it into the kingdom of heaven. People that are washed in the blood of the Lamb and got all their lamb, lamps trimmed and burning bright. Oh, yes. Full sermons are available anytime at www.anchoredinfaith.org. Contact us by calling 319-828-4815 or write us at Anchored in Faith, PO Box 204, Oxford, Iowa, 52322 or email us at tv at anchoredinfaith.org. This has been a copyrighted presentation of Anchored in Faith Gospel Church, Oxford, Iowa.